I've been asked by a couple of people to give a tutorial on grinding profile high-speed high steel cutters for um, machining my radiuses and so forth. Um, I've got a couple here that I've already ground up which I've used and some of you would have seen these in use on the lathe. The first one is a just a radius tool. Now this is ground for, it was ground originally for brass. I put a bit of top rake on it for cast iron. I'll explain that in a little bit of a minute. This is a, another radius tool for another job that I did. Quite aggressive rakes. This is the last one I did on the column for the step for the beam. It's a lazy man's tool. It contains two outside radiuses and an inside radius, and therefore I can do the whole operation with one tool. And you'll have to excuse these birds. I'm gonna have to stop in a minute if they continue to annoy the pop out of me. My little friend's come for a feed. He, um, he's a little butcher bird, little like a little miniature kookaburra. He's quite loud and persistent. He won't shut up till I give him something to eat. He's worried about the other birds. There are lots of birds here at the moment. And he just, he'll just keep going and going until I feed him. Lovely little bird. But he is quite annoying when you're trying to do videoing. And so are these Corellos. I've now been joined by another friend. They are so, so, so demanding. He will come down and sit in the workshop with me and torment me till I feed him. So I'll have to take a break and feed him. Again, he's worried about the Corellas as well. You can hear them in the background. They're just so noisy. A Corella's like a white cocky. Here comes one. So I fed the birds. They're happy. Hopefully that'll shut them up for an hour or so, so I can get some filming done. There's the troublemakers up there. Without a word of a lie, there's hundreds of them. And they pick the nuts off the tree. This one's getting upset with something. Sorry about the shaky camera. Check. They're eating the nuts off the tree and they drop them down on the roof above my head. Sorry about the wavy camera. People think they're cute. After 10 minutes they're not cute. the size of nuts. They're a big bird. They peck at the nuts and then they just drop them on the tin roof. Branches, sticks, anything they can get their beaks on. They're worse than a, a childcare centre. It's a bit windy today so he's blowing around quite a bit and I'm having trouble holding the camera. Okay, we're going to grind this. This is a new piece of high speed steel, half inch by half inch. 
pretty standard high speed steel, it's nothing special. So we'll start off and we'll grind this up. Now, I will show you most of the steps, but of course it can be very difficult to get the camera in close to the grinder. But I'll do my best. I'll show you what you need to, uh, to grind these, these high speed steel. Obviously you need a piece of high speed steel. You need a grinding wheel, well dressed and we'll do that as well. And I also use a stone to finish the tool off with and I'll show you that at the end. Before I start, I just want to go over a couple of important angles on, on grinding. Now, I'm not an expert. I've been doing this for many years and it depends on the individual person but there are some basics you need to know, you need to follow. The first one, which, oh you have to forgive these, these birds. The first one is the most important one in my opinion, is the back rake. That's the rake here on the top of the cutter. Now that will vary according to what you are machining. Ferrous, non-ferrous, brass, aluminium, etc, etc. The end clearance is important, but uh, not, not as important as top rake. We come over here, the side rake is also important. But of course, if you're using a radius tool, you can't have side rake. So it's not as much anyhow. It is a compromise. The side relief on a this is this this drawing is of a normal high speed steel cutter. On a radius tool you would have two side reliefs, one either side. Again up the top the end cutter angle is not important on a radius tool. And I'll explain why as we go along. Now there are plenty of charts on the internet for your rake angles and if you notice if we have a look at brass the, the back rake which is the top rake is zero for brass and bronze cast iron it's five degrees so when I machine these tools up, or sorry, grind these tools up, that's a bit of trial and error. I just give it a, a one or two degree and see how it cuts. Again, this is trial and error depending on what you're cutting and the speed you're cutting, the diameter you're cutting, the lathe you have, all sorts of different things come into play. Now these angles can vary also to your tool holder. If you've got the old-fashioned type tool holder which is angled back, you, you've you got to take that in consideration as well. The angle of the tool holder forms part of the back rake. I'm using a quick change tool holder which doesn't have any back angle on it, so the tool has all the rake. I'm just going to dress the, the grinding wheel with a diamond dresser. This is nothing fancy, just a, a cheapo diamond dresser off eBay. You can use many different types. You can use the pointed type, the flat type. It's up to you entirely. Now this high speed piece of steel is already cut or manufactured with a end relief on it as you can see here which makes it a bit easier for grinding. We 
just start running away, keeping the angle of the tool correct. I don't have a, a tool grinder tool post. Remembering I'm doing a radius tool. Try to use the whole face of the grinding wheel. Don't get the tool hot, well, excessively hot, blue. I don't quench in water. Unfortunately, it takes practice. Try not to grind on the sides of the wheel. not designed for that and I have seen them explode. Just adjusting my angle a bit because I'm, I'm having trouble getting in front of the wheel with the camera next to me. You can see already how the radius has been formed but keeping the relief angle I do the radius, always do the radius first if I'm doing a radius tool. So I'll keep grinding a little bit more and bring you back. You can see the, the radius starting to form. I've also just started to touch off on the side for side relief. Nice and slow and not heavy touch. So you can see the through the tool, the front clearance angle, and I'm just starting on the side clearance angle. I know I said don't grind on the side, but if you just give it a light grind, just to get that clearance angle. You notice that the tool is on an angle, that way and that way. Just to take off and give it a little bit of rake.
Doesn't need much. As you get down closer, I have to put this up unfortunately, you can roll the tool down very lightly. That'll give it a more even curve. I'll continue to do that and bring you back in a minute. We'll continue on. You can see it's starting to take shape. Now this is going to be a big radius curve because I'm, I'd, I'd spend an hour grinding it down to be a small one. I just want to show you the basic idea. Still going. See the, the basic shape is now forming. It's a bit irregular. Now I'm doing this freehand. You can use a radius gauge. I have a Starrett radius gauge if you want to get it perfect, but for this purpose only. Still going, Had a bit of relief either side. You keep grinding to get the desired radius. Front rake, side rake, it's very hard to see on the camera. But all we need really is a top rake as well. 
Now at the moment this is zero, obviously. Uh, I'm just going to put a couple of degrees on it just to show you what a top rope looks like and how to do it. I will use the side of the wheel, um, but it's only a very light touch. You can see, you just take the, the rake out until it touches the edge. Try to get it even. That's all it needs. That's all it needs for, for brass and cast iron. If it was mild steel, the harder the steel, the less rake you need. But for brass, if you have any rake at all, it will dig in. But that's only about two degrees. Now the fun part. Honing it. I'm using an Arkansas stone fine stone and honing oil you don't need much oil do the top rake first you simply hold it flat with your finger now unfortunately experience and fear will come into this and just hone it Now I'm only going to show you this, I'm not going to, going to hone the thing completely, otherwise I'll be here for about half an hour. Once it's honed, it just, that's all it needs to take, to sharpen the edge up. You don't need to grind it. You probably can't see it on the camera, yeah maybe, you can see the the cutting edge corner there see how it's honed it? we'll do a bit more Once you've got that edge honed, you don't have to hone the whole face, just the edge. Once you've got that edge honed, you just want to hone the top edge as well, the round. It is, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can pick up stone and roll it, but because that's a bit hard with the camera, I'll try to roll the tool on the stone.
You don't have to go crazy. It's very difficult doing this with the camera right in front of it. That needs quite quite a bit yet. You probably can't see it, but that edge now is starting to become uniform and shine. There's a high spot there. You don't have to do the side rakes. It's just a cutting edge you're doing. You would keep doing that until you get your edge nice and sharp and keen. You can actually feel it, it feels like a knife. A good edge. I was talking before about radius gauges. I have a set of Starrett, a couple of sets of Starrett's, small set and a large set. Uh, these are probably older than me. Obviously Starrett are made in the USA. They were given to me when I first started my apprenticeship. They'd have to be at least, oh, I'm not going to say, probably 60 years old. But if you were keen and you wanted to, to grind that to a, a radius, you just use your, your radius gauge and just keep grinding it till you get the correct radius. Obviously just turning it over. With the stout gauges you've got inside, inside outside radiuses. I'm not going to do that today. It's not that critical. As you can see, the basic process of grinding a tool. A little bit of top rake, front clearance or front rake, side clearance or side rake. You just keep working away until you get it to the profile you need. Remembering that the cutting is only done on that very, very edge. So if it looks a bit rough down here, don't worry about it. But this edge up here is the one that is important. I hope you found this useful. A little bit difficult with the birds and the tripod. There, we got there in the end. So if you like this, please subscribe, like. And as someone else on YouTube says, ring that bell. Okay, thank you very much.